Hi guys and welcome to another video. So today we're going to be going over a few transfer targets that have been going through the media for Sunderland of course. I'm guessing that a lot of them aren't going to be true. I'm only going to go about three or four of them today because these are the kind of videos that you're going to get probably over the next few weeks until something legitimate does actually happen because in the close season it's uh, quite difficult to just drag up content. So I just thought we'll go over three or four of them that have caught my eye. Some of them I'm not really too fussed about and some of them we definitely should uh, hope happen. So we'll go for the first one. So the first uh, rumour I have seen recently is that we are interested in Chelsea goalkeeper Nathan Baxter. Now he's a goalkeeper, of course. He's 22 years of age. Last season he was at loan at Accrington Stanley. He made 19 appearances for them. I think he's 6'2", so he's a, a decent height for a goalkeeper. And before that he was on, uh, on, on loan at Ross County where he made 13 appearances there. But for me, I don't think we need an inexperienced goalkeeper like that. For me, and I've made it clear before and, and only recently did I say that I'd love to see us go for Craig McGilvery, who has apparently now has run out his contract at Portsmouth, although I have read an interview um, uh, with him recently. You know, he's desperate to stay on the South Coast, his family are there and what have you. So it's probably highly unlikely that we end up getting him and bringing him up to the North East. I can't see that happening. But for me, he should be our number one target if we are going to be looking at a keeper. And if these kind of rumours are true, that you know apparently we're all looking for a keeper, be it on a permanent or a loan deal, which I think is right. I do think we need a new goalkeeper. I think uh, Patterson should be going out on loan. And I think Burge, it, he's just got too many mistakes in him, in my opinion. Like I say, he's more than capable of saving us a point or two, but he's, he's also just as capable of losing us three points, which is something that you can't have in a side where you're trying to win a division, we just can't have that kind of liability at all. So McGilvery, who's been arguably the best goalkeeper over the last two or three years in League One, you know, on a free, surely we have to be at least having a look at that avenue to see if we can bring him to the stage in line. For me, this lad, Nathan Baxter, I know very little about him. He is a young lad, he could grow. But we, if you want a young lad, we've got Patterson. If we're going to use a young goalkeeper, we've got Patterson, like I say. Yeah, he might not be as experienced at first team level. He hasn't made an appearance for Chelsea, Nathan Baxter. He has only played for Accrington and for Ross County. Then, of course, the youth groups, the, the youth teams of Chelsea. Um, but if you want a youth keeper, like I say, I'd rather us just use one of our own, being Patterson, who has looked decent, rather than taking a risk on a young goalkeeper to put in front of someone like uh, Lee Burge. I'd rather a more experienced keeper who we know we're going to be be able to rely on, i.e. a Craig McGilvery. But again, how likely that's going to be, I do not know. But next one, we're going to have a look at an outgoing, and it's one that was something we're going to have to look at at some point anyway, and that's none other than Elliot Embleton. So Embleton, of course, is just being promoted with Blackpool. Of course, he was on loan with us, um, which was absolutely horrible to see, you know, a Sunderland player get promoted, but it's not for Sunderland. It's just, it's such a Sunderland thing to say, isn't it? And it just doesn't make sense, you know? Well, of course it makes sense, but when you're trying to say that, when you try and explain to someone, you know, a Sunderland player did get promoted, but Sunderland not promoted. It's such a Sunderland thing, you know, he, he was brilliant at Blackpool, and apparently before the playoff final, there was already talks of if Blackpool were to go up, then they were going to really test our resolve and, and send in a pretty decent offer for Embleton because he's been absolutely fantastic there. A lot of people have argued that he shouldn't have gone out on loan. Originally, if you look videos back, I didn't want Elliot Embleton to go out on loan because I really, really rate the lad. But I can also sort of understand why he went out on loan because his game time was going to be limited. He was coming in and out of injury, but he's got a really good run of games with Blackpool and he's really shown what he's capable of with his assists and goals as well. He scored in the in the playoff semi-final, he scored in the, sorry, he got an assist in the in the final itself as well, so he's proved to be a vital player, a key player for Blackpool, and I just really, really hope we can tie him down and um, and, and and keep him on wayside, basically, because I think he can do a job for us next season, um, anywhere across the forward line, I think Elliot Embleton can do a job, he's, he's you know, he's two-footed and he's either foot, which is such a rare thing these days, you know, for, for set-piece taking as well, he's got that creative spark that we've lacked, you know, in behind, or sorry, or, or just, um, just in front of the strikers, so we can pick out strikers, we haven't had that little bit of creativity and that's something we're craving, so if we can give him a run of games and, and he is injury-free, then... Elliot Embleton can be one of our best forward players, hands down. I really, really rate the lad that much. But going into another player coming in, in terms of, of course, just a, just a rumour, because that is all this is. It's a rumour. It's, it's, it's exciting. I like talking about rumours anyway. I, uh, I find it really interesting. But 
There is another rumour. So, Sunderland, Pompey and Ipswich have all been linked to a striker named Guy Malamed, who I've never heard of, another one who I've never heard of before. 28 years of age, he's been released by St Johnston. He made 18 appearances last season, scoring just the five goals. So, it makes you think, why would we want someone like that? But he has, in a couple of the reports that I've seen, he has been likened in the past to Dennis Bergkamp. Which of course you need to uh, you need to take this with a pinch of salt because you know we no disrespect to St Johnston, I don't think anyone of the same ilk of, of you know Dennis Bergkamp is going to be playing for them or in Scotland. You know uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But you know I, I, I suppose I'm not going to take that comparison too far. Uh, so again, it's another player I don't know much about. I think he's only five foot eight as well, which 100 percent for me isn't a Dennis Bergkamp esque type player. But uh, it's someone that we've been linked to, and if someone like us. Pompey and Ipswich are after him. Maybe he's, he's, he's got a lot more to his game than just goals. Because, you know, five goals in 18 appearances, you know, it's not terrible. But um, we would want a little bit more than that in uh, in League One, of course. But now to the big one. The one that uh, I actually want to believe more than any of the rest, of course. And that is Dion Sanderson. It's been reported in the Daily Mail, uh, the Echo, Football Insider. Uh, it's been reported that Sunderland have been looking down the avenue of maybe trying to get another permanent, or oh, sorry, a permanent deal for Dion Sanderson. It is reported that they only want Wolves. They only want around £2 million for him. And if we can get him for £2 million, then that's an absolute steal in my opinion because he's not only a top-class League One defender, a minimum, bare minimum, because you know, he's already proved to us that he can do a job. It is a long term investment because I believe he will end up being worth so much more than two million, you know, and he's already proved he can do it in the championship. He did it with Cardiff a couple of seasons ago. We played right back for them and he was fantastic for the second half of the season. He was really, really good and of course we've seen what he was what he was like for us. He's an absolute gem in my opinion but it is also reported that Sheffield United and Huddersfield are after him as well and he does come across as a very ambitious young lad he can eat like I've just said as well he can do it in the championship so if Sheffield United or some like Huddersfield do come calling it wouldn't surprise me if he did end up going there um, or if he did get an offer from them he would go there you know for me I didn't think Wolves would want to let him go but when you when you do think about it the Premier League it's a completely different kettle of fish isn't it to, to League One he might have you know torn up mountains for us in League One but for for the Premier League teams or, or for Wolves as a Premier League side yes it's good that he's done well but it isn't anywhere near the level that they would want him to be if that makes sense yes he's, he's impressed but if they can get a couple of million out of him because you know because he's had a decent half a season with us or a really good half a season with us then I think they'll probably take it because Wolves will have the money and the finances to bring in someone arguably better than him um, but that's just my thought process anyway. But I would absolutely love to see us bring in Deion Sanderson, if that is true. Again, the original source from this was Football Insider, who I don't trust at all. They do get the occasional thing correct. But with Football Insider, it was only the other day where they said that Lee Johnson was on the brink of being sacked. And then literally less than 24 hours later, Kira Louis-Dreyfus came out and said that Lee Johnson is a long-term appointment and he's not even considered getting rid of him. So it just makes you think... Are they talking shit? Are they just trying to stir the pot a little bit? I don't know. But they have cor they have correctly predicted certain things before. Uh, the Carl Winchester um, transfer, I'm pretty sure it was them that actually uh, reported that before anyone else knew. So they must have some kind of knowledge, but of course they just got the Lee Johnson sacking horribly wrong. Uh, but yeah, so that's pretty much all the relevant transfer news I've seen at the moment. So for me, of course, I'd love to see Deion Sanderson. You know, Nathan Baxter, I don't think it's one that I'm particularly bothered about. Same with the striker guy, Malamed from... From Scotland, of course, Elliot Embleson, I absolutely want to stay 1,000%. I think it could be crucial for us next season if we do give him a run of, a run of games because that's something that we haven't been given our youth. You know, Same with that Ethan Robson was, when he was here. He'd be given a couple of games and if he wasn't getting a 10 out of 10, we wouldn't see him for another 6-7 games. And that's a really bad way to manage your youth. And Embleson was the same. He might give you know, might give him a couple of games and if he's not tearing up trees, then, then, then you won't see him for a month. It's ridiculous how poorly managed some of our youth has been. You need to give him a chance, give him a run of games because Blackpool have done it with Embleton and he's been absolutely incredible. So that is the trench rooms that are going around at the moment. Which ones... Are you interested in, if any, I know some of those, or a couple of those at least, aren't particularly interested, oh sorry, particularly interesting, Jesus Christ, can't talk, but the one player who I would like to see, a lot of people asking, you know, like, if I could buy one player, who would it be? For me, and I've said it for the last couple of seasons, I'd love to see us get Scott Fraser in, who uh, is at MK Dons now, he just is everything that we need in our midfield, you know, for the last season or two, we've had like, Max Power, we've had Ledbetter, we've had Scowen as well, all very samey defensive players, um, you know, it's not bad having a defensive player, but when you've got a midfield completely collected 
or a, a collective of defensive players you need that outlet that can actually go forward from midfield and Fraser has destroyed us on countless occasions and has walked through our midfield on countless occasions and we need that someone that can actually begin an attack from the middle and go direct through the middle rather than us constantly having to go up the wings it's just a really good option to have he can score goals he's a very creative mind and to have that from the centre of midfield I think he'd be absolutely ideal for Scott Fraser so he's someone who I think we should really maybe at least consider going for but in saying that he's only been at MK Dons for a year, but um, if we could maybe entice him away, I know that he was rumoured to join us last season, but then the salary cap came in and uh, a lot of things fell um, f fell away uh, because last season, I can remember, I think it was the day of the salary cap, uh, Philip Parkinson, it was very heavily reported that he was on the brink of signing Scott Fraser and Luke Garbutt as well, of course, now at Blackpool, and uh, of course it fell through because of the salary cap. But um, yeah, so you guys let me know what you think about these um, transfer rumours. If you've seen any more transfer rumours, let me know in the comments as well. Who would you like to see sign as well? Let me know. But if you have enjoyed this video, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively, massively appreciated. And subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, you take care and stay jammed.